Thank you for your word, ever new, ever fresh. Thank you for your spirit that will take every part of the word and apply it to every heart and every person. We pray, Lord, tonight your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, with our heart, with our mind, with our brain, with our thinking, will follow through your word, and the word will be of tremendous benefit to everyone. Fulfill your promise in the word. And the example we see in the word, we pray to lead us to have the same faith and the same trust and the same confidence. And as you have not changed, the power, the impact of the word will not change in our lives. Do good in every life tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody shout. Tonight, we're looking at Mark chapter 5. It's a very familiar story. But it has not so familiar application. I'm reading to you from Mark chapter 5. Verse 25, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grow worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press of the crowd in the multitude behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, if I may but touch, touch by faith, touch with confidence, touch with trust, touch with expectation, his clothes I shall be whole. And straightway, Instantly, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body, she felt in her body after that touch that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, in the crowd, in the multitude, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And the church said, yeah. that's the story we're looking at tonight. And it's about the touch of faith that the woman had on the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we touch him or he touches us, there is always a demonstration of his power. And as we gather together, all the instances that we have in the Bible, when people touched the Lord, and when he, the Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and the very Son of God from heaven, when he touches anyone, like it will touch you tonight. 
There's always a demonstration of the miracle power of the Lord. Number one, there will be recovery. Whenever you touch him or he touches you, if you have been down, if you have been despondent, if there's disease or plague in your life, sickness you've been battling with, as you touch him and he touches you, there will be recovery. Number two, there will be restoration. You've gone far away from the Lord. And now you come to the Lord and you touch him by faith. Restoration will come in your life. Whatever you have lost, whatever you have missed, when your hand of faith touches him, there is restoration. The touch we're talking about tonight, which is the touch of faith. When he touches you and you receive that touch by faith, there'll be renewal. Give me a good amen. When the Lord touches us, a renewal takes place. Any part of our system, from the spirit to the soul and to the body, he renews us. If you're weak, he'll renew your strength. If you are down, he'll lift you up and there'll be renewal. You know, when Jesus touches us, there is regeneration. Regeneration means that your soul had been dead in sins and trespasses. And now the Lord touches you. And there is regeneration. He recreates your spirit. We can call it recreation. That's the life of the spirit, the life of the soul that had been away before. A renewal, regeneration, welcome. Sometimes you are not sure of who you are, where you are. And then you come to the Lord and you touch him by faith. You will touch him tonight. Then a touch of reassurance comes. You are down there. You are wondering how it is you will live the life that is confident and courageous and reassurance comes. When he touches us, the righteous one, the holy one, the mighty one, the powerful one, he touches us and the person who has been unrighteous before becomes righteous. A touch of righteousness. There are times you're weary, you're tired, you're worn out, and then you say, if I can only touch him, and then you stretch forth your hand of faith, and you touch him, and there is refreshing that comes, and the weariness, and the dryness, everything vanishes away. Tonight, it will touch everyone. There will be recovery. There will be restoration. There will be renewal. There will be regeneration. There will be reassurance. There will be righteousness. There will be refreshing as it touches us. As we look at the passage, the topic tonight is divine transformation through the torch of faith. You're not looking at him in the physical. And it's not in the physical or the crowd or the press or the multitude. But he says, where two or three are gathered together, he will be in the midst of them. If we're gathered in his name. And tonight, we're gathered in his name. We're studying his word. We want to see again his power, his authority. For Christ Jesus has the power to manifest spiritually, to manifest physically, and to manifest emotionally even in your life. So tonight, as we look at the story of French, we look at it from the perspective of divine transformation. 
through the torch of faith. On the one hand, there is the torch of faith, and then the result of that torch, which is divine transformation. Connection between us and God. And then transformation will take place in every one of our lives. It will happen tonight. Three things we're looking at as we look at this story. Number one, a decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Decisive. There's no doubt about it. And it's definite. There is no maybe or but about it. A decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Point number two. The descent disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. The woman would not have known that Christ will know it immediately. In fact, the disciples did not know. They said, you see many people thronging you, pressing on you, and you're saying, who touched me? But he affirmed and reaffirmed and revealed over and over, somebody touched me. That was the discernment of the Spirit and the disclosure of the Spirit. They discerned, disclosed, touch by his truthful revelation. Point number three, the desirable divine touch for a transforming renewal. That's the part that becomes applicable to you personally today. Desirable touch coming upon your life. A divine touch that is going to be manifest in your life. And it is for a transformational re a renewal. Desirable, divine touch for a transforming renewal. We'll come to point number one. The decisive, definite touch for total recovery. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered. But rather grow worse. She had had the problem, the plague, the disease, the sickness, the issue of blood for 12 years. And she wasn't just lying unconcerned. She had seen and she had sought many physicians, doctors of the day. And she spent much money. In fact, the record says she had spent all that she had and yet, there was no improvement. Then she heard of Jesus. The day you hear of Jesus, your salvation is very near. Your healing is very near. And your deliverance is very near. And the victory that you have been seeking for, and you have spent a lot of money, and you didn't have, that victory is very near, is very near today. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Why? For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I shall be whole. And straightway, that means immediately, that means instantaneously, straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body, this is real. This is definite. This is a great miracle. This is a visible miracle. And she knew it. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague a decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Look at that passage again. There are three things you'll find there. Number one, 
the unclean and incurable woman. The plague made her unclean. That plague was incurable. She had tried everything she could try. There was no cure. The unclean and incurable woman. Number two there. The unchangeable and infallible word. The unchangeable and infallible word. The word of God. That heaven and earth may pass away. But his word, the word of power, the word of authority, the word of healing, the word of faith, that word will not pass away. The unchangeable and infallible word. Number three, the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. The undeniable and irrefutable wonder. Look at verses 25 and 26 as we look at the unclean and incurable woman. 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. She was unclean. How? That plague that disease, that issue of blood, according to the Levitical order, made her unclean. And that's why she sneaked behind. And tonight, any sin that makes anyone of us unclean, and we've tried to be pure, tried to be healed, tried to be well, and we found that impossible. Tonight, all things are possible. I said all things are possible. You see it in your life. You feel it in your body. If it's your child, that child is well tonight. If it's your wife, you spent quite a lot, that wife is well tonight. It will make you whole. A change came for her. Healing came for her, and that healing is very near. But we need to seek his help. Look at Psalm 108, verse 12. Psalm 108, reading from verse 12. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. We have tried We've sought, we've gone to them, we've given them money, we've spent all that we have, but vain is the help of man. But Christ will help. Christ will heal. That thing that looks impossible, Christ will make it possible. In your life, the knot that appears, you cannot ravel, you cannot untie. You don't even understand why this, why that. Jesus is the answer. Acts chapter 4, I read from verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there deliverance in any other. Neither is there relief in any other. Neither is there cure in any other. Neither is there victory in any other. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But thank God the woman heard about Jesus. And thank God you are hearing about Jesus tonight. The same yesterday and today and forever. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5. Now we see the unchangeable word and the infallible word. Look at Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she heard the word. 
about Jesus. She had testimony about Jesus. She heard the word that brought faith in her. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. What did she actually touch? Let's look at John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, reading from verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, that's talking about Christ, and the Word was with God, that's Christ, and the Word was God, that's Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. No wonder He healed everyone. All things were made by Him. He's the Creator. And if there's anything missing in your life, missing in your body, the Lord will create it tonight in Jesus' name. This Christ, the Creator, will recreate you. This Christ, the Healer, will heal you. This Christ, the Savior, will save you. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Look at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Christ is the Word and is the unchanging, unchangeable Word, immutable Word and infallible Word. And this woman heard of the Word, heard of Christ and she believed like you are believing tonight and a change took place. A change is going to take place. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17, Romans 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That woman heard of Jesus, heard of the word, and faith came up in her. And as you hear about Christ, the word tonight, faith will rise up in your life. You will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. This word will turn your life around. This word will give you healing. This word will give you salvation. This word will give you power. This word will turn everything in your life around in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God, without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, here is a secret, when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which worketh effectually also in you that believe. It will work effectually in you. As you receive the word, not as the word of a man, but the word of the Almighty God Himself. And as you receive Jesus, the word that is able to do today what He ever had done. That word, that Christ, that Savior, that healer, that deliverer will work in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. The unclean and the incurable woman heard 
the unchangeable and the infallible world. And then she experienced the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. She received, she experienced the power of Christ that works in her the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. And Christ is still the same. And his power is still the same. And his authority is still the same. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. His word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Let's come to Mark chapter 5 again. We're reading from verse 27 all through to verse 29. Mark chapter 5. Reading from verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole and straightway. Somebody help me shout straightway. Let me hear you say it with the preacher's voice. It will happen straightway tonight. It will happen immediately tonight. It will happen instantaneously tonight. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That's how it happens always and today is not an exception. Mark chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 10. Mark chapter 3 verse 10. For they had healed many. Christ, the healer, the deliverer, the Savior, he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him to touch him as many as such plagues. You know, some people think it's only this woman we're reading about in Mark chapter 5 that touched him. But many other people, when they had heard of him, they manifested the same faith and they touched him and their plagues were taken away. You will be among the number. Chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 54. Mark chapter 6, verse 54. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and they ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that was sick, where they heard he was, and whithersoever he entered into villages and cities and countries, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they the sick might touch, if it were but the border of his coming. You see that? They had heard about other people touching him. And when they touched him, they were made whole. And so they brought the sick, even those who were so sick, they couldn't walk by themselves. They were laid on beds, on couches. And they pleaded with him that these sick people might touch him. Look at the last line there, verse 56. And as many as touched him, tell me, were made whole. Going to happen to you tonight. Everyone that touches him by faith is going to deliver, is going to heal them. What a healing. What a wonder. And what a miracle. What a transformation. The touch produced a miracle. And as you touch the Lord tonight, a miracle will be produced in your life in Jesus' name. What kind of miracle? Number one, incomparable miracle. 
incomparable miracle. Look at the woman. She'd gone everywhere and she wanted healing, but there was no help. No physician could help her. No healer could help her. No prayer house could help her. No tradition could help her. No ceremony of the Jewish religion could help her. But then she touched Jesus immediately. Healing came. Number one, incomparable miracle of healing. Number two, irresistible healing. As soon as she touched, connection brought miracle immediately and tonight as we mention the name of Jesus nothing between you and Jesus no wall of demarcation there will be an irresistible miracle in Jesus name number three replaceable miracle you couldn't replace that miracle with any other thing that woman said I've been suffering for such a long time and I've not been able to get anything out of all the expenses I have made and now I want something and shall she turn Jesus Christ a miracle happened incomparable to anything that can ever happen in her life a miracle happened irresistible she couldn't resist it she had to come to Jesus to say and to confess it's me that touched you your miracle tonight is irresistible irreplaceable I will not trade this for anything. I will not exchange this for anything. I have this one. I've been looking for this for 12 years, and now it has come. An irreplaceable miracle. An indisputable miracle. You couldn't argue with the woman. No psychologist could argue with the woman. No therapist could argue with the woman. No neighbor could argue with the woman. I got this. I felt it in my body. And I know it is real, indisputable. Number five, an irreversible miracle. She got it. Satan could not take it away. Evil spirits could not take it away. Evil power could not take it away. And the comments of people, criticism of people could not take it away. She got a miracle that was irreversible. Tonight, your miracle is irreversible. But you know, the woman couldn't understand. Yes, she got it. Yes, she received the miracle. And she must have been wondering, how is it? Even though I said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. It happened exactly as I believe. But for me, it is incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. I couldn't see any electricity flowing from the garment to the woman. I couldn't see any trace of anything flowing, like water flowing, like a fluid flowing, incomprehensible. And yet, it happened. It's going to happen. And it was indispensable. Indispensable. What can I do without this? How far can I go without this? This is a miracle that is necessary, indispensable in every life. Well, that's how the miracle of Jesus is every time. A miracle of, of salvation, the same. Miracle of healing, the same. Miracle of deliverance, the same. Miracle of dominion, the same. Miracle of the supernatural, the same. And the miracle you get tonight, the same. Incomparable, irresistible, irreplaceable, indisputable, irreversible, incomprehensible, indispensable. I welcome you tonight to Miracle Center. I welcome you tonight to the place of the power of God. He will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Come to point number two now. The discerned, disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. When it happened, only Christ and the woman knew. Peter did not know. The person standing by 
did not know, but she knew because she felt it in her body. And how Christ revealed it. He discerned it. He disclosed it. Look at it. Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 30. Mark chapter 5, verse 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself without being told. That's why he is God. He is the son of God and he is God. He knows all things even without telling him. He knows the depth of sorrow and sadness that you may have. He knows everything about you. And as we are saying tonight, this is my night, he knows. As we are saying tonight, I will receive it tonight. He knows, he knows all things. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, pressing upon you. And says thou who taught me? And he looked round about to see her that had done the same. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And told him the truth. I'm happy tonight that I have a Savior who knows all things. I'm grateful to God tonight that I have a Redeemer who knows all things. Even before I know, even before you know, He knows everything. He's Christ. He knows it all. The good and the bad, He knows. The upright and the ugly, He knows. The true and the false, he knows, he knows all things. The hidden and the revealed, he knows. The secret and the open, he knows each all. Nothing can be kept hidden from the Lord. All your anxiety, all your care, all your thoughts, all your problem, even the unbelief and the faith and the expectation, and what you're thinking now, he knows everything. Nothing can be kept hidden from our Lord. All hidden actions, all hidden attitudes, all hidden atrocities, all hidden abominations are known to our God. He knows our actions of faith. He knows our acts of faithfulness. Everything will be revealed and rewarded. Actions of filthiness, he knows that too. Actions and acts of falsehood, he knows that too. And he will expose everything and punish everything. All unconfessed sins, he knows. All unrighteous secrets, he knows. All unclean habits, he knows. All unlawful relationships, he knows. All ungodly covenants, he knows. All unfaithful transactions, he knows, and will be exposed and punished by him. The very fact that Christ knows everything should make us to live a life that is free and full and powerful. Your life will be free. Your life will be powerful. And you know, whenever you are praying, you should remember that what you are trying to tell the Lord in prayer, He knows about that already. He knows the origin of the problem. He knows the source of the problem. He knows how the problem came. And He knows how the problem will be taken away. And tonight, you'll discover while you are praying, while He answers you, he knows everything. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. 
For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, he discerns, he knows, of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. All the multitudes were there, a great crowd pressing upon him. And yet he knew when the woman touched the garment, and knew the woman that touched the garment, and knew the purpose, the reason why, and knew what had happened. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Tonight, he knows everything in your life. He knows your desires. He knows if and when you are sincere. And there's no point hiding anything. Make it open. Reveal your heart. Reveal your life to him. If there is sin in your life, you cannot hide. He knows and is the one to forgive. He'll forgive as you call upon him in Jesus' name. If the sickness is the one to heal, and you cannot just say, I have a problem, tell him the name of the problem. And if you know how it came, tell him how that thing came. He knows it already. And when your revelation, your confession, matches his revelation, deliverance will come in your life. Welcome to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I read from verse 2. Revelation chapter 2. And we're reading the first part of verse 2. Look at that. Chapter 2. It says, I know thy works. Your words, he knows. Your works, he knows. Your thoughts, he knows. Your action, he knows. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, for thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I know, verse 13. In verse 13, I know thy works where thou dwellest. Even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful witness and matter, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. He knows. Tonight he knows. I said, Tonight he knows. Verse 19. In verse 19, I know thy works and charity and faith and service and thy patience and thy works and the last of them more than the first. He knows it all. Look at chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis right, these things says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works till the end. He knows, he knows everything. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man shall shut it. For thou hast a little strength. I know the level of strength you have. And hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. I know. Verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I would thou art cold or hot. Very clear that Jesus knows everything about us. Your concerns, your desires, and your wanting what you want tonight, what you desire tonight, the Lord knows everything. He will satisfy every longing soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now, the desirable, the divine touch for a transforming renewal. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 5, verse 34. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Did he say amen to that one? Yeah. Your faith tonight will make you whole. Yeah. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. How did she show faith? How did she demonstrate faith? She heard what she had others to have heard. But others did not take any action. They just said, Jesus is wonderful, but no action. Jesus is great, but no action. Jesus is a miracle worker, no action. Jesus is savior, but no action. Jesus is redeemer, but no action. Look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. It is a stretching force of the hand, saying, I have heard of Jesus. He has healed other people. He has saved other people. He has redeemed other people. And it is based on faith. And I believe in him this moment. And I demonstrate my faith. She put her faith into action. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without action. Faith without works is dead. Verse 26. First the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works faith without action faith without touch faith without works is dead also your faith will not be dead faith active faith visible faith and faith that will bring miracle in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not be mixed with faith in them that had it. They didn't personalize the word of God. They didn't say, that's for me. They didn't internalize the word of God and say, the possibilities of faith is exactly for me. It was not mixed with faith in the heart of them that heard. Therefore, it didn't profit them. Are you there? Are you hear everything? You are hearing sound. But you are not taking the word by faith. Apply it to yourself. And here you are. You have a serious problem. An incurable problem. A problem you had gone about and you had tried many things and yet they didn't work. And here is your chance, and the word is not mixing with faith in the heart. The word will mix with faith in your heart. And that faith visible, that faith active, 
the faith that is going to do, going to act according to the faith, will do something in your life. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. And his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. Faith in his name will make you strong tonight. Whom you see and know, yea, yes, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. In our presence tonight, before you leave, faith will work in your life. Faith will heal you. Faith will deliver you. Not faith in yourself, not faith in your own ability, not confidence in yourself, faith in Christ, faith in his name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and everything that torments will clear away from your life. The faith in Christ saves. And that faith in Christ heals. That faith in Christ gives us the victory. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Without active faith, nobody can be saved. But a person who believes Christ died for me, that's not enough. Action. What's the action? Confession of your sin. And as you confess your sin and turn away from your sin, then something will happen. Forgiveness will come. Salvation will come. New life will come, and victory over sin will come in your life in Jesus' name. By faith, are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves? It is the gift of God. Look at Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. I'm reading now from verse 9. Acts 15. Verse 9. It says in verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Anything we need, everything we need tonight, we're going to touch the Lord by faith. I said, we'll touch the Lord by faith. As we touch the Lord, He Himself will touch you. It will touch me tonight. Me, me, me. It will touch me tonight. Look at what the touch of the Lord does. We're looking at Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Here is Jacob. He was praying. He had a long-standing problem. The problem had been there for many years. Esau had threatened. He will kill him. And after the many years, that threat was still there until he began to pray. And as he prayed, look at what happened. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 25, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he, the angel, touched the hollow of his tie. And the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as the result was him. It was that touch that went to work on Esau. And Esau, the enemy, was changed to be a friend. Even when he saw Jacob, he ran to him and kissed him and wept. His heart had been tender because of the divine touch. It'll give you a divine touch tonight. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. First Kings chapter 19, verse 5. 
Here is Elijah, tired, weary, fainting, discouraged, in despair, wanting to give up, wanting to die. But look at this, a torch revived him. That torch will come to you tonight. Verse 5, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him, touched him, and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and he laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and, tell me, touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too long for thee. The strength for the journey ahead. You receive the strength in Jesus' name. And he arose, and he did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. The man that wanted to die, he didn't die anymore. He was taken up with chariots of fire. He experienced the rapture. You will not die on timely days. Everything the Lord still wants you to accomplish, you will accomplish. As it touches you tonight, revival will come in your soul. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, out of the womb, I sanctified thee, set thee apart, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Is the Lord talking to anybody here today? The Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and did what? touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in thy mouth see I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out to pull down the word of authority has come in your mouth as the Lord touches your mouth you pull down every stronghold. And to destroy, you'll destroy every work of the devil. And to throw down any chain, any yoke, you'll grab it, you'll throw it away. And to build, you will build your family. And to plant, good planting of the Lord will be upon your life. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, I'm looking at verse 12. Luke chapter 7, verse 12. And now when he came near to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. It's always like that. He has compassion on you tonight. And said unto her, and says unto you, and says unto us, 
and says unto your family, Weep not. And he came, and he came, and did what? Touched the bear. And they that bear him stood still. And after touching the coffin, he said, Young man, I say unto thee, 